Okay, everybody. Oh, here comes Jason. Okay, everybody settled down, sort of anyway. Uh, Paul Heavenridge won't be here tonight. He's on a cruise in Alaska and doesn't have connections. I feel so sorry for him. Um, okay, um, any announcements before we start the presentation? I would like to introduce our new fund development manager, Siri Tongjer. Siri, would you like to come down? Oh, there. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Siri Tongjer. I am so excited to be here. I will be joining the Sonoma County uh, Library team on Monday, and I, um, I, all I can say is I'm delighted. Oh, I am delighted, I'm excited, and we're gonna raise a lot of money, aren't we, together? <laughs> okay, does anybody else have any announcements? Like, maybe Jason? I'm a new dad. <laughs> okay, um, with that, good news. Jamie, you want to take over? Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Thank you. All right, um, good evening, commissioners. I'm Jamie Anderson, Collection Services Division Manager. I'm gonna be sharing some information tonight with you about uh, one of our newest services called Link Plus. I'm gonna do my best to keep the presentation to about five minutes and then leave time for questions at the end. So Link Plus is a new resource sharing service that launched on July 15th. Library card holders who aren't able to find what they're looking for in our collection can now search the Link Plus catalog and find access to an additional nine million titles from other academic and public libraries. Link Plus is known for its quick service with items arriving within about a week. From a collection standpoint, we're really excited about Link Plus because it expands and deepens our collection and it increases the diversity of our resources, all while not taking up any additional shelf space in our libraries. In addition to offering this deeper collection to our patrons, part of our reciprocal obligation is to lend our own materials out to other libraries that are members of Link Plus. Okay, um, so most of our patrons are currently able to find the materials they want through our catalog. When they want a title we don't have, the next place to check is now Link Plus. So this is where Link Plus fits in. The library still offers traditional interlibrary loan for materials unavailable through Link Plus. The main difference is ILL materials take longer to get to us and we're unable to borrow media through ILL, whereas we can get media through Link Plus. In addition, we still encourage patrons to suggest titles that they think we should purchase through our online suggest a purchase form. Um, the stats I'm gonna share are going back to June 18th, which is when we began our soft launch and trained the staff. So going back to June 18th, our patrons since that time have requested 3,192 items, and that's as of today. Um, in addition, we have lent out 3,177 items from our collection to other Link Plus libraries. So you can see those two figures are pretty close to each other. Around August 20th, about two months into the service, we had surpassed the number of Link Plus transactions that we had done for all of last year's interlibrary loan lending and borrowing. Every borrower type at Sonoma County Library is participating, including student one cards and teacher educator cards now that school is back in session. 26% of our Link Plus usage is by youth card holders, which is pretty impressive. About 45% of Link Plus materials borrowed by our patrons are books, 
with media making up the other 55%. So our, our patrons are borrowing more media than books. Within that media category, our patrons are borrowing DVDs the most at 66% of the time, audiobooks at 14%, music CDs at 10%, and foreign language media at 10%. Um, the average time from a patron placing a request to the item being on our hold shelf is six days. What we advertise to the public is that the service takes seven to 10 days. Our interlibrary loan transactions have decreased by 50% in just a few months, and we expect that to go down further as many of these requests can now be filled through Link Plus. We've also seen an impact on our suggested purchase uh, requests. The number of suggestions have decreased from about nine per day before Link Plus to five per day today, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up. Of the suggestions for purchase that we receive, a good portion of them can now be met by directing the patron to Link Plus. Of course, we still purchase a good portion of those as well, if they're titles that we think are a good fit for our collection. Some trends. So what types of titles are our patrons borrowing? There's a few pictures here that show um, some children's materials on one side, some media on the other. Our patrons are borrowing popular movies and old television series from 20 to 30 years ago. Teen graphic novels are going out quite a bit, romance novels, political interest titles, cookbooks, crafting and hobbies, older fiction, and so on. I've been using Link Plus quite a bit myself for cookbooks. I brought a couple of examples. I like to make recipes at home, and Link Plus is great for cookbooks because they're expensive, and you don't know you want to buy one until you've had a chance to look through one. So this is one I got from Contra Costa Library, and this is one from San Diego Public Library. <clears throat> Patrons from all of our branches have been actively borrowing items with central library patrons borrowing the most at 14%, followed by Sebastopol patrons at 13%, Rohnert Park at 12%, and Northwest at 11%. On the lending side, we're lending out about 32% books and 68% media. So again, more media than print. Many libraries are borrowing our music CDs, DVDs, and our video games. Of the books that we're lending, the majority of them are nonfiction titles. There's been an interest in our foreign language collections, especially Spanish, our wine library collection, philosophy and psychology, religion, health, the arts, and all sorts of graphic novels. Uh, I next want to share with you some patron comments that we've received so far. One of our longtime interlibrary loan users called to renew his ILL items. Uh, one was not renewable, but was available through Link Plus. Before the staff could finish telling him about Link Plus, he said to his wife, honey, the library is getting Link Plus. You can get all of your romantic comedy DVDs and those new mysteries you like. Another longtime patron um, through Interlibrary Loan called to thank us for getting her ILL request through Link Plus. All the books she wanted were older and some were out of print. She's rereading them to her mother who's no longer able to read due to macular degeneration. She asked to thank everyone who brought this service forward. We had one patron who actually ordered VHS tapes, which we thought might have been a mistake. We called him to confirm that that's what he wanted and he was very excited that they were on the way. He said, quote, this is almost as good as blockbuster reopening. Another patron comment that came in to the director, um, quote, I am thrilled that Sonoma County Library has gotten hooked up with Link Plus. I am now able to get the audiobooks and DVDs I haven't been able to get. Some items have been on my wish list for eight years. I'm deliriously happy with how quickly I've received these items. And on the staff side, I just wanted to share one comment from a branch manager who said, patrons are floored with what they can get through Link Plus, how fast the service is, and the fact that it's free. Patrons and staff are happy that all their holds are in one place when they come into the library for easy pickup instead of having to ask for these items at a service desk. Okay, so funding, staffing, and other impacts. This, by the way, is a, a picture of our outgoing uh, Link Plus materials, you can see they get packaged in various bags, totes, et cetera. So funding, the cost of Link Plus for the first year is $68,438, which includes the Link Plus software, the courier service, and one-time startup costs. 
This amount does not include indirect costs such as staff time. We were very fortunate this year that the State Library covered the entire first year cost. We will begin paying the ongoing cost next fiscal year, which will be approximately 40,000 per year throughout the duration of our five-year contract that we're currently signed in for Link Plus. I um, wanted to also share with you the cost per transaction. So the average cost per Link Plus transaction is $2.45. Compare this to the average cost for an interlibrary loan item, which is $6.51. This is a bargain. And then if you take it even further and think about the cost, if we had purchased that item, if we had acquired it, cataloged it, housed it on our shelves, um, the savings is even more. There has been an impact on staff at the branches in regards to the new service. So the branches have prioritized their hold pull lists so that they're pulling Link Plus holds first. This has made a huge difference in making sure we get our Link Plus holds in transit within 48 hours, which is part of our obligation as a Link Plus member to uh, keep, keep everything moving forward. Branches are pulling more holds than they used to before Link Plus. For larger branches like Central, Petaluma, Roner Park, Katadi, and Sebastopol, they are typically pulling an additional 10 to 20 more holds per day, so it's not inordinate. For uh, Forestville, Occidental, and Roseland, they're only pulling two or three additional holds per day, and all the other branches, the average is five to 10 additional holds per day that they're pulling. There's also, of course, an increase in the material handling as these things go through the delivery um, throughout our library system. The materials are routed to headquarters and get packaged and sent out through the Link Plus courier. Again, the picture here is an illustration of that. There's also been an impact to staff in the interlibrary loan office. The workload in the ILL office, which handles all of Link Plus and ILL transactions combined, has increased fivefold, and we anticipate it topping off around 10 times the amount of transactions that we used to have before Link Plus. This office is currently run by two people um, with a total of 1.4 FTE. And there's an action item on your agenda later tonight to discuss um, an increase in staffing for that office. A couple other impacts I wanna mention, um, the need to redesign our interlibrary loan office to make more space for the increase in the materials and to reorganize the furniture, carts, and equipment to be as ergo-friendly as possible. Again, you can see in this picture, these things do take up space. Um, the Link Plus software itself has some quirks, and it is fairly old school, so we've been learning how best to work with that. And we'll soon be training one to two staff members at each branch uh, to learn how to use the Link Plus software so that they can answer some of the basic questions that patrons ask rather than referring them over to the ILL office at headquarters. So almost done, but I'm hoping you'll indulge me for just a minute because there are some people I'd like to thank. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you, the commission, because you have been supporting Link Plus um, since the beginning. If you recall, last year we had budget surplus money from Measure Y, and Link Plus was one of the items that was earmarked for funding, and even though the state library covered that, we didn't need to use that. That money will carry forward. Um, I'd like to thank the Link Plus Task Force. This was a task force of staff that met about twice a month for about the last six months working through all the implementation details before we went live. And this group included staff from Northwest Library, Petaluma Library, our IT department, ILL department, and collection development. I'd like to thank the graphics department and the marketing staff for the branding and the publicity that they put together. I left um, up front a rack card that we are distributing to patrons that describes Link Plus. Um, I'd like to thank the branch managers and the public services division managers and all of the frontline staff for giving Link Plus a chance and experimenting with it during our soft launch. They provided really valuable feedback to us so we could fine tune the workflow before um, we went live to the public and for being so patient and willing to add Link Plus to their plates. Um, a huge thank you to the IT department. We could not have gotten up and running without uh, especially Mike and Vicki who spent a substantial amount of time getting the technical details worked out so that Link Plus is fully integrated as much as possible with Horizon, with our public catalog, and with our self-checkout machines. Um, finally, I'd like to acknowledge Jane Greenwood, Nancy Schwartz, and especially Michelle Lee, who is really the mastermind behind the day-to-day -day operation. Over the last two years since Michelle started working for the library, she has devoted 
countless hours to researching best practices, visiting other libraries, learning about workflows, developing all of our documentation, delivering the staff training, and always with a smile on her face and always available by phone, by email, to assist patrons and staff with their Link Plus questions. And Michelle is in the audience here tonight. If you would like to say hello. So that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy now to take any questions that you have. I had a question. Do items go out daily? Monday through Friday, yes. And are they aggregated in at the central, or do they go out from each branch? So each branch sends them to the library headquarters in Rohnert Park, which is where the ILL office is, and that's sort of the hub, and then they go out from there. Thank you. Barbara? Well, it sounds like a great success. So thank you to you, Jamie, and to everybody involved in that. I was, you know, always um, impressed by the cost, $2.45 as opposed to library loans. So that's really impressive. 68% uh, on media. Is that uh, our request from people in our library going out? Because you, you gave us some statistics at the beginning and then some more numbers. Like yeah. I wasn't sure which way that went. Sure. So the 68% was for our materials going out to other Link Plus okay. libraries. But um, for our patrons, they were also borrowing more media than books, but it was 55% for our borrowers. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sure. I did have one question because um, on the information page, it says fiscal impact none. That's not actually true. Um, I gather the, the startup cost, like you say, was paid by the state for this first year. Yes. It included all of the costs except for staff, right? Yes. So right now we are using existing staff. Yeah. And then in the future, for the next number of years on that, we have to pay, what was that number? It was approximately 40000 per 40, year. 40000 a year. And then mm -hmm. we'll have the ongoing extra staff costs. Correct. Yeah. Great. Well, anyway, it's a great success. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Tom. Um, I want to make a comment that um, kind of the computer idiot that I am, I have used this software from my own office and ordered a book. And it, it is not, once you actually read everything, it, and I've gone through it now, I, I can make it work. Um, I would want to say, though, that I would have preferred to have all those statistics in writing in the report instead of rattling them off because they just came in and out. And um, the, the slides are pretty, but they don't really say anything. Just, just for future reference. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you, Jamie, very, okay. very much. Thank you. Okay. Anybody from the public wants to make a comment? Alrighty, come down. Or I guess you have to go to the podium there. Yes. I'm actually interested in, can you hear me? Is, is this coming through yes. okay? I'm actually interested in speaking on item four and I don't know whether you're gonna take comment on item four because it's closed session. So I'm taking this opportunity to ask you that question, first of all. Um, since it's, it's public comment and we'll be going into it immediately, what, what is? Okay. Hmm? That's good. Okay. Okay, go ahead and make your comment and then we'll have it when we walk into our session. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, good evening, members of the commission. Uh, my name is David Leland. I'm a resident of Agua Caliente in the Sonoma Valley. Um, I was surprised to learn of the recent demotions and transfers of several branch managers. Um, I've been using the county library system since I moved to Sonoma 27 years ago, um, and primarily the Sonoma Valley branch. I remember clearly when Lisa Musgrove uh, was hired as the branch manager, she brought with her a wonderful positive energy, has always been eager to help any member of the public, and I've seen her uh, deal with all kinds of people at the library. Um, and she's done that both with enthusiasm and with patience. She's got a full command of the library's resources, and in my experience has also been 
um, uh, very diligent about following up and asking me whether the advice and, and uh, materials that she had pointed me towards uh, were useful for me. Um, even more than that, she was able to transmit her energy and her engagement to her staff, uh, making the library overall uh, a much more welcoming and valuable part of our community. From my perspective, in her time as branch manager, she produced positive outcomes for all of us and should be receiving recognition for her contributions rather than demotion and transfer. I'd also like to speak to uh, the progressive discipline process. Uh, I worked for a public agency for 18 years and have either observed or was responsible for initiating progressive discipline processes to address a variety of performance issues on a number of occasions, including, for example, patterns of inappropriate use of government equipment, poor attendance and time accounting, and substandard work products. Uh, in all of these and other instances, the first step in the process, the first step in the process was discussion of the issue with the employee and verbal coaching on how to resolve or address the situation. In many cases, this first step of meeting, discussing, and coaching was adequate to resolve the performance issue without any further action. I offer this as perspective as you consider the circumstances around the actions taken with respect to the library's branch manager that's before you in item four. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, David. Anybody else? I'm afraid, oops, I gotta stand on my tiptoes. Can you see me? <laughs> Probably not, oh well. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be as measured as Dave was, but you'll hear, oh wow, look at that, more technology. Okay, my name's Karen Kubrin, I live in Sonoma County, and I'm a taxpayer and a library pa patron. It is a shame that the library administrators who have been in positions less than a year have chosen to harass two dedicated, competent, and well-liked branch managers. Their actions have led to a waste of time, energy, and money which will not be forgotten when it comes time to vote on funding for the library system. It is unconscionable to demote two experienced managers for a relatively minor infraction without, without following the progressive discipline procedure. For what purpose? I have no idea, whether it was a power move or who knows. Um, it is well known that the library system has had a frequent turnover of directors. It is upsetting that the library is using taxpayer funds to defend discriminatory behavior. This whole issue should never have reached this stage. One of the saddest results of this action is the long-term effect it has on those who've been demoted. It has revealed to them, to these staff members, the dark side of a bureaucracy that does not value their hard work, enthusiasm, and commitment. I urge you to settle this matter equitably and move on to more important issues. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Anybody else like to speak? Okay, I'm closing public comment and we will adjourn for our closed session. Thank you. Okay, we'll call the 
meeting back to order. And as a report out on the closest session, there's no reportable action taken. So we'll move on to lab appointments. Uh, Sonoma. It's uh, an appointment to the Library Advisory Board. Uh, Petaluma. And Paul's not here. Would someone like to read the appointment for Karen? Okay, I just had a finger pointed at me. I move by resolution that the Sonoma County Library Commission appoint the following applicant to the term as listed. Karen Peterson to a position on the Petaluma Library Advisory Board for a term ending on June 30th, 2023. All those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, yes. I need a second. I'll second that. All right. Sorry. Okay. Now, do I hear the ayes? Aye. aye. Thank you. And uh, those against? Okay. Passed unanimously. Okay. Is there anybody here who wants to report on a lab or the foundation or friends? Okay. I see nobody. So we'll start with the commissioner reports, and that means the chair goes first. Um, I just did a lot of things. Went to the mayors and council people, saw OCN, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, had some good conversations, and I think that was the most important part of the month. I did appoint the committees, and in doing so, I did try to consider where everybody was in their life uh, in the process. So I hope everybody's happy. If you have an issue or a concern or a thought, please don't hesitate to contact me. And I'm willing to talk about it and make adjustments as necessary. So um, I hope you all enjoy the work ahead of us. Okay, so. Um, you want to start with Stephen? Sure. In addition to the regular meetings, I'm working, uh, continuing to work in partnership um, with stakeholders, not only in Sebastopol, but in Roseland, and help to set up a meeting with one of those stakeholders, the Sonoma County Resiliency Collaborative, with our director, Ann. That's all. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, Randall. Um, the report from Windsor is in the packet, and I have nothing to add. All righty, thank you. Karen? Uh, the report's in the packet. I just want to note it's very exciting to see the progress on the archives task force. Okay. Um, Tom? No report. Ready. Uh, my report's in the packet. Nothing to add. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Um, in addition to some of the other meetings that most of us went to the mayors and council members, uh, council members dinner, et cetera. Um, I had an interview with the American Libraries Magazine. Uh, they were doing a story on advocacy, which is going to run in the fall issue. And uh, Ray was kind enough to organize a meeting with Senator McGuire. So uh, Director Hammond and I met with Senator McGuire and had a fabulous photo taken in Healdsburg. Um, so let's hope that the Let's hope that the uh, article says lots about Sonoma Public Library. Um, I've attended the California P Library Association Advocacy and Legislative Committee meeting. Um, we had several meetings, the ta Archives Task Force had several pre-meetings and meetings with Historical Records Commission also. And then we finally culminating with a meeting with Supervisor Gorin. And, um, and so we're going to move forward um, with discussing what to do with the archives. And uh, so there's going to be sort of a pre-task force created um, at the request of Supervisor Gorin, uh, a number of county employees, and then also um, Sarah from the library will be joining that pre-committee. Uh, and then I also attended several webinars, um, uh, um, one of which was really terrific about um, reaching across the aisle for library funding and other initiatives. So that's my report, thanks. Barbara? Thank you, my report's up on page 19 through 21 in the packet. I wanted to say just two quick things. One, I thought the 
uh, Los Cien event, which was the Lat Latino cultural experience at, at Luther Burbank, was a particularly excellent event. Our chair was there also. It was an amazing networking opportunity, really, and fantastic music. And I just I really had a good time, and I thought it was really well done. And I just wanted to say one other thing. Uh, Jennifer Duran has been uh, working at the Rent Park Atati branch as the interim branch manager for the past several months. She's just done a wonderful job. She's a, a just a delightful person to work with. She is organized, she is kind, she's, a, she's um, thanked the friends with chocolates. I mean, she just does lots of extra little details and she's been wonderful to work with and I just wanna publicly thank her for the wonderful job that she's done. We are looking forward to the new, uh, branch manager Phil Hoft, who's coming in soon, but Jennifer deserves a big uh, shout of thanks for the great work she's done for the last few months. Thank you, Jennifer. Jason. Discovering the wonderful world of Dr. Seuss, and that's about it. All righty. Uh, nothing else to report on. <laughs> You'll discover a lot more worlds before you're done. <laughs> David. Yeah, my report's in the pack, and in addition, I did attend the August 8th mayor and council members dinner. I thought it was an excellent event, very worthwhile. And the food was great too. All righty, and so I'm the last. A um, lot of what I did is in there and I agree with Barbara, the music at the Los Cien thing was absolutely incredible. They had a mariachi band that was all students to begin with. The voices, I mean, my, the emotion in the voices was just phenomenal. And uh, the harpist has played all over the world. He's played for six presidents. He started when he was three and a half. And I mean, he was, he started playing the violin when he was three and a half. The harp came along later. Really, really, really great. But Sunday, I went to Sonoma Ready Day. There were 4,500 people there. They gave out 2,500 uh, kits, emergency kits, and Catherine Reinhardt and Megan um, tabled. And it was, I mean, it was great to see. I think Lana told me she had 500 people come to the table. Very, very nice. And um, her display was really great because there were a lot of people there talking about how you get your pets out. And you know, you store so much water and you store so much food and you need to do this and that. And she talked about how you save your pictures of your family and the things that meant something to you and that were your history. And it was really kind of a neat display, neat table, neat thought, something different than the other. So I really enjoyed it. Anyway, okay, that's it for that. We're moving on. Um, director's evaluation, I'm sure that some of you noticed tonight that we didn't do what we had said we were gonna do last time because I found some stuff that had been adopted in 2015, January of 2015. I think I had been on the commission for four months or five months at the most. And I, we need to re revisit it because um, some of the forms they use and some of the ways they're doing things don't fit what we need to do now. So we're putting that together. Um, I'm gonna pass it by Deborah and the SOP committee and we'll have it for you next month and we'll be able to move forward with that. I don't think that's gonna put us too far behind in evaluating uh, and we're actually only required to do once a year. Just starting out, it'd be nice to do it a little more because it gives her a little more support. So that's the director's evaluation report. And move on to finance, Randall. <clears throat> the finance report is in the packet. Our next meeting will be Monday, two weeks from today, September the 23rd. And I'm gonna have to ask Renee when she steps up, where's our sales tax money? Okay, um, Deborah, well, what? Andy? Sorry, Stephen. Stephen. Thank you, and I just wanted to say publicly, I do appreciate all the ongoing hard work of the Finance Committee to include someone thinking about putting more in our OPEB trust 
So thanks for that, because we're hearing at least my council people are continuing to talk about the growing potential liability, financial liability, and that it's always good to be on top of that and to save when you can. So thanks for thinking about that, whoever did that. Okay, anything else? Okay, Deborah, uh, yeah, you're the chair of the advocacy, aren't you at this point? I am. I okay. Am. And uh, apologies for not having it in the packet, um, but let me just give you some highlights of the meeting. We talked about the PG outages and decided that um, uh, staff is going to develop a report on policies that cover response to environmental issues at the next committee meeting. Um, we talked about Roseland, and uh, um, uh, since we're the advocacy committee, we think that Roseland is going to be one of the things that we focus on in the next couple of years. Um, uh, we also discussed the state measure, ACA-1, which um, uh, was going to allow, um, cities, towns, departments, um, JPAs to, um, to do construction projects that only took 55% as opposed to the two thirds that they generally um, require now. And, uh, and alas, ACA 1 was four votes short when it hit the floor, um, and even more actually, um, uh, I think subsequently. So we're not quite sure where that's going, but, um, but we're going to be having some more news on that probably. Um, I mentioned the meeting with Supervisor Gorin. Um, in terms of general advocacy news, we're going to try to develop a generic uh, Sonoma County Library slideshow that every commissioner can take abroad and personalize, and uh, we think that that will um, make your lives a little easier. Uh, most of you have done some of those presentations, but we think that it's important that we have some s real data to, uh, to, to hand you as you move forward. And so Mr. Holly is going to be working on that, but we're not gonna make him do all the work. He's gonna give us some, I'm sure. Um, uh, Commissioner Zolman reported on his experience uh, the Sonoma County Resiliency Collaborative, and so um, he is going to connect Anne with the leader of the resiliency group. Um, we talked about Measure Y renewal, even though it may be early, it's never too early to talk about um, what the next step is. So we were busy in our um, advocacy meeting, and we also talked about um, we should always keep an eye out for someone who uh, loves the library and can bring something to our future in terms of recruiting new board members, so new commission members, rather. And that concludes my report. All righty. Um, foundation liaison, I want to say something that I didn't say when I was talking about the committees. Um, I think I said that I tried to consider people's life circumstances and um, Jason was the foundation liaison, and he's now alternate on a couple of committees because a man with two jobs, a new wife, and in particular, a new baby, that really wears you down. And he and I talked, and I told him that I gave him two alternates so he could work with people, uh, you know, on these two positions and at the same time be able to maintain because he says, I said, how you doing? He says, I'm tired. And I said, well, that's not gonna change for another year or two. So, you know, anyway, I just want people to know that that's why this is happening, that some changes were made on that. And I hope that those that are appointed the actual quote unquote representative will work very closely with the alternates that they have with them to move forward. So it's a teamwork instead of a single person. Anyway, so now that I've talked a little bit, um, Jason, you're still the foundation guy. <laughs> Until next month. Yeah. Um, this, this meeting was, um, uh, from the foundation, was a, a non-ordinary meeting. The, it was more, uh, I wasn't there able to attend, but they packaged chocolate for the Chocolate and Cinemas event uh, that happened last month. And as I understand, it was a success. Um, and it was a good old movie. And other than that, um, that was the focus for the foundation last month. Um, 
And then I think there was a couple local purveyors of chocolate that uh, donated to the uh, event, and those were all recognized. So, um, you know, I'd like to see the local use of local products, so that was, that was great. Um, and uh, I think the foundation will get back on its uh, ordinary track this month. Oh. And that was the big event for the year from the foundation, uh, and uh, they are s starting to generate more events. But uh, as I understand, it went well, and that's it. All righty, thank you very much. Um, the Measure Y Oversight Liaison, um, I don't... They're currently working on the annual report that they need to do. The next meeting is Wednesday, September the 25th, and I'd like to welcome a new member to the committee, Barbara Hughes from Sonoma. All righty, thank you. No comments, all righty, moving on. Roseland Coalition, Stephen. Yes, we had a very great, terrific, awesome last meeting. Lots of great energy, lots of good report backs about when we're gonna be able to get keys to the complete building. Um, anticipated somewhere like November, which will give us uh, the staff plenty enough time to get everybody on board and trained and brought on um, with the anticipated opening date in January, so that's awesome. In the packet, um, Ray did an awesome great job of depicting like the front, the signs um, that'll be on the new um, interim branch location. Um, and then also in the report, his report, it mentions that there'll be some signs coming up I think later on this month at our current interim location to at least advise the public of what's happening, where the new place will be, and to sort of give them the heads up, which I think is terrific. Um, a lot of the coalition members are continuing to meet with community uh, partners and stakeholders to work on s suggestions around programming to get our youth involved. Um, as I mentioned before, the Sonoma County Resiliency, um, there's a climate change group, there's various um, schools that have expressed interest in working with um, the library to make it, again, as culturally um, uh, a positive space as we know it will be. And then also, we, ne we never lose track, the coalition never loses track of the fact that that's just our interim um, location and that we're still working with everyone that has signed the petition to come up with the formal permanent location and the funding around that, building off the work of many of us on the commission um, and the people who have signed that pledge. So we're continuing to work on that because we do realize that five years will go by super fast and we really wanna make sure that we have a permanent location. So, and again, shout out to Commissioner Merrick in getting Sutter. I think that any time we can get a big institution, it's just awesome, so thanks. All righty, uh, thank you, Stephen. The SOP, Karen? Report is in the packet. All right. Okay. Um, the foundation and commission, I would like, we'd, we haven't met, but I would like Tom and Jason to think about when they go to the next foundation meeting, to think about if we need to have a foundation commission ad hoc committee. And if we don't, let's just, we'll, you know, uh, what do they call it? Put it to sleep, whatever. And um, if you think it would benefit us in our relationship with the foundation, then we ought to start holding it and acting on it, so. Okay, uh, bylaws review. No report. Thank you. Um, commissioner orientation and training. We're getting Diane on board and we're gonna have our committee meeting within the next couple of weeks. Okay, and the all day lab committee, uh, I've left a message for Sam to find out when she is holding the next session for the all day labs. And uh, finally, we have one that is kind of being the process of being created and that's the archives task force, Deborah. And it's not on your agendas, by the way, but. It's not on the agenda, so why don't I call it an addition to my personal commission report. Um, Karen and I have uh, 
been on the Library Commission task force um, for a couple of months, and we've met several times, either one of us or both of us, and certainly staff has met with the Historical Records Commission, who is anxious as the library is to create a safe space for historical records and archives important to our community. Um, so commissioners Fox and Schneider and myself, we met with County Supervisor Susan Gorin on August 14th to discuss the formation of a formal archives task force that would include people from the county and also people from the library and from other um, places like the, uh, like the Historical Records Commission um, as well to discuss formally putting together a real task force to be fully recognized by both the voter supervisors and the library commission. And so we had a great conversation with her, it covered lots of things, mm, how to make the archives more accessible to the county and the community. We talked about digitization, but, but we were very clear about um, the fact that we are the keepers of the archives and we have no space. And so we made that we made that pretty clear to them. And uh, um, so Supervisor Gorin suggested creating an initial working group um, to take a look at the scope of the project. And Darren Bartow, who is the Assistant Deputy Clerk of the Board of Supervisors, is reaching out to county staff members. Sarah Vantries, we hope, will serve as our representative um, from the library, uh, just to kind of make sure that that before we bring it to a larger task force of the commission and the supervisors, um, that they actually have data and details and know what they're talking about. And we're hopeful that that won't take um, too terribly long for that, uh, for that. I think that the people who are going to be on the pre-task force, if you will, um, have great incentive to move things forward. So they'll be, They'll be working together, and we will continue to report the progress here to the commission. Thank you. All righty. Thank you very much. Karen? I just had a question. I didn't hear the, I, I, I couldn't hear the, um, what was said about the uh, orientation, commissioner orientation. It, it went by pretty fast. Could you uh, oh, unwind? You want me to back up to that? Yeah. Okay, Thanks. what I said was that uh, we are gonna be meeting with Diane, who's gonna be in charge of the orientation. She's the consultant that we hired. Diane Mayo. Diane Satchwell. She'll be doing the commission retreat, which is not really an orientation, but it's it's the retreat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and when is the retreat? Don't know yet, we're meeting with her in the next week or so. Okay. And we will give you time, and it's not gonna be tomorrow. So we'll give you a little bit of lead time, at least a day and a half. Okay, anything else? Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. Um, I'll move that the consent calendar items be approved. Oh. I David, so I guess I need to ask, are there any of the items that anybody wants pulled? Yeah, I'd like to uh, pull from the consent calendar item 9.5, 9.8, and 9.11. I have some questions. What were those numbers? 9.5, 9.8, and 9.11. Okay, so everybody okay with the rest of the consent calendar? Okay, um, David, are you? I'm prepared to move to approve the remaining, remaining ones. Yes. All righty, is there a second? Second. Do you please use your microphone? David. On the move. Oh, on the move, it was David Cahill, and yeah, he's right, it isn't on. You're, okay. And I anyway, seconded it. And Jane. McKinsey, Barbara McKinsey seconded it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all those against? All righty. So 9.5, 9.8, and 9.11 have been pulled. They go down into action items by motion. Let's take um, the approval of the positions of the collection services first. Is there any comment, any public comment? Okay. I don't see any public. Um, Jamie and Suzanne?
Okay, I'll start. So we're on 10.1, I think, which is... 10.1, yes. About page 120 in the packet. Okay, I just wanted to share a little bit of um, data around the statement that's in the cover memo regarding the uh, five times increase in the volume of transactions that are happening in the Link Plus ILL office. So prior to implementing Link Plus, um, we were doing about 435 ILL transactions per month. And that's dropped down now to approximately half or 220 items per month. Um, Link Plus transactions, since we began um, in the most recent month's data that we have, so the entire month of August, we were doing about 2,500 transactions in that month. And the forecast for the next six months or so, we're anticipating it to increase about 25% or 3,125 transactions in the month. And then looking even further beyond that, other libraries have told us to expect about 10 times, basically by the time everything settles, um, which for us, 10 times our prior ILL transactions would be about 4,350 transactions per month. So we aren't at that level yet. We are right at about five times pre-Link Plus right now, but we expect within the next 12 to 18 months to get to that point where we're at 10 times. Okay, any thoughts or comments? Okay, I don't see any. So do I hear uh, a motion to approve 9.5, approve the amended, oops, no, wait a minute. 10.1, uh, excuse me. 10.1, approve an increase of authorized positions in the collection services. So move. Move, move. Karen moved. Who seconds? I do. Oh. Do, uh, Barbara, Barbara. Ah, Deborah do Doyle seconded. All those in favor of passing 10.1, approving the position increase? Aye. 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 All those against? Okay, unanimously passed. All right, so let's move to uh, 9.5, approve amended employment agreement for the library director. Um, Suzanne, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, this is, starts on page 47, and um, at the, I'll let you get there. So while I was not present at that meeting, I, what, I did have the opportunity to go back and watch the sections of the commission meeting where um, the direction was made from, uh, rec from the closed session to go back and approve the, um, to uh, give the director of the COLAs and for um, 2019. Uh, 20 and 21, and since those were made retroactively for the staff, uh, we would do that from um, Anne's state of hire. And then, um, so I just wrote, put it out there for the whole, on the staff report for the uh, for the whole term of, of um, as stated uh, from Reese. Um, also, when we were reviewing uh, the contract or the employment agreement, we noticed that it had previously, Previously, it stated on the um, uh, under Section 5.4 that the library would match uh, one percent of the um, directors um, what the director put in for the 457 plan, which basically, if, so if she put in, I'm ter I'm terrible with math. I should. If you put in five hundred dollars, it's five dollars. Yes, basically, and that was not what the that was not what the uh, library's intentions were when the, when the um, contract was drafted. So it needed to be revised. So basically that's what, what we did in this amended agreement. Okay, Barbara. So I'm the one that asked this to be pulled. I still don't understand it. I guess that's my, my point. It says the library will match the employee's contribution um, up to maximum of 1% or the IRS maximum. So what, what was the missing, what was not the, what was the library's 
expectation that wasn't met by this, or I don't get what the so misunderstanding was. So basically, it could, the library will match up to 1% of the employee's salary if the employee's putting in, um, so it would be like 18, if her, if her salary is $180,000, the library will match up to 100, or up to 1,800 a year if she's, if she's making a, a contribution, not $5 of a $500 contribution and now that, it was and not it, written it was not, it was written very vague and not the way most um, not the way most contracts are written with regards to the 457 match program in other words the match is to the salary it is not to what you put into the retirement and the match to the salary is what every what it was other employee about. actually employer actually does okay and ours was miswritten so the COLA just kind of brought the surface up, this issue up to the surface. It wasn't the COLA. No. It wasn't the issue. No. And it so, was the poorly written contract. Yes, and so since the contract was being amended, it was, it was not, let's not amend this part and then come back next month and then amend it again for the separate section. So we, it was, since it was being opened up, brought to the commission, it seemed prudent to bring it and amend both sections at the same time. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, all those I'm, in favor? I move approval. I'll Pardon? second. Oh I yeah, move approval motion and, and Barbara seconds. Okay, Jeez. it's getting late I guess. Uh, Hauser made the motion and Barbara seconded to amend the employment agreement for the library director. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? passed unanimously, so 9.5 passed unanimously. Now we are down to 9.8, approving the classification specifications for library shelver, library aid, and library specialist. Again, Suzanne. This begins on uh, page 70. So <clears throat> the library has been in uh, negotiations with the union to develop these classifications for um, years. But um, most recently when I came on board, we uh, did a, um, a job description questionnaire and um, salary serving and after many meet and confers and negotiations have finally developed um, the job descriptions and um, have signed with, with the union, so reached an agreement there and then um, agreed upon a uh, salary step in, um, uh, a salary step increase or to a range increase for the um, for these, the aid and the specialist, and then agreed on a, um, a, sh a shelver classification and um, um, and a range uh, a range for them. And I'm I'm very pleased. We we worked very hard, and I think this will help us diversify uh, and be able to draw in um, just part time people that are not able to work, students and and people who may want to come back to work in, in the community. So um, I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. Yes. Yes, I'm the one that asked that this be pulled. Um, so this is really two two different things. One, I think we've all been very supportive of the idea of uh, the shelvers, the part-timers, getting some high school and college students in, getting in, diversifying our workforce, and I, I think everybody's very supportive of that, and I'm really, really pleased this is gonna happen. My question about that part of it is, wh what are we gonna do in the recruiting thing? Is this gonna be kind of like an ongoing, open position where we're gonna be constantly recruiting for it, or? Um, since there are no, since it's, there are no FTEs allocated, um, that'll be a decision that um, we didn't come to you asking for any positions. Since there there are no, um, like I said, there are no FTEs, but uh, I think that'll be an organizational, um, operational needs. Um, we're very anxious to move forward and um, begin begin recruiting for it. There is uh, one other matter that it, we are pending to resolve, which is with. Um, library aids, which is a classification that we've been uh, working out with the union to try to um, resolve because of the um, 
ongoing, uh, having staff that are doing work that's repetitive in, in motion, and so we do have to have a couple more meet and confers to try to determine how to best utilize that classification. So um, I think Anne operationally will, will need to work with public services and determine how to launch that recruitment, but we couldn't move forward with anything until we got the classification and salary approved. Okay, so that's that's one half the question. So then on the other side, the other folks in these other two classifications are actually getting upgraded in terms of their s salary classification. Yes. And they, that is based on a comparison to the shell, what the shelver is doing? No, it's an actually excuse me, it's actually based on evaluating their skills, knowledge, duties, classification, and then once we determined a new job description and agreed on that classification, we looked at what they were doing compared to um, others in the, in the industry and um, what we could negotiate with them to, you know, to get the matter resolved. There was an ongoing uh, side letter and also just, um, what their their internal equity and and market worth uh, was or median worth was as well. So, so it's a, it was an um, because remember we did the classification study for the other um, group previously, and these two classifications were not included in that study. They were not. No, they were not. It's a significant cost. We're talking about two hundred seventeen thousand dollars plus potentially forty percent benefit cost. I mean, it's a big chunk. <clears throat> These are existing employees. Yes, um, Measure Y does include, um, you know, this in, in this is part of Measure Y. And while it says librarians, I think that the public perceives all public-facing staff as librarians, oh. and so they don't know that a library, um, you know, a library technician is a, not a librarian. And these staff does uh, constitute over, you know, or at least third or two thirds, I mean, of our, you know, of our public facing staff, I may yeah. be wrong on that statistic, but they are a big, the majority of, a, of, the, of the public facing staff. Yeah. So I think it, it's a good investment. Yeah, no, they're important people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? All righty, so. I move approval. Second. Okay. Second. Okay, so Tom Hauser made the motion to approve the classification specifications, and David Cahill seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? All righty, passed unanimously. Okay, so now we're down to 9.11, approve the joint use agreement for Forestville Rural Station. Um, Lana? Uh, good evening, Lana Edlawan, Public Services Division Manager. We're gonna be on page 91, page 91 through 119 for this item, which is the approval of a joint use agreement for our Forestville Rural Station with the West Sonoma County Union High School District. Hello, this is Ann Keck, General Counsel. As indicated in your packet, the library has operated a rural station in a room in the El Molino High School campus. And there was an original written lease that expired in 2012 and the parties pursuant to the terms of the lease have uh, mutually agreed to extend its terms up to the current date. Uh, at this time, the district did want to have a new written lease the, with a current uh, time provision, with a current term, and uh, asked for a, uh, several other provisions, including some cleaning fees, an increase in the rent, and some very specific contract provisions. Uh, uh, we negotiated the lease with the district and the district's council in Southern California over the course of several months and are presenting the final version of those negotiations to the commission this evening. Yeah, Com uh, Commissioner McKenzie, I believe you were the one who asked for right. this to be pulled. Asked, Did you have asked, any questions? Right, I've asked for it to be pulled. Um, back to this issue of leases, which we've you know gone around about um, in different 
ways and different topics for a while. One of the reasons that we are doing the re bylaws review was to add lease provisions at your uh, suggestion, uh, General Counsel Keck. And um, so we're you know, in the process of, of pulling them all that together. They, uh, again, the concept of the library is that the jurisdiction puts forward the building and the library puts forward the services and the interior and the books and so forth. So I guess my concern about this is only that we haven't, or just right on the verge of doing the bylaws, um, finalizing the bylaws, we're very close to that. And this is a five-year lease, and again, it obligates the library to pay for the building, rather than, in this case, this would be in the county, this would be a county responsibility. And Ann's saying, no, because <laughs> it's a school district. Yes, so just to clarify, the JPA amended agreement does require the commission to adopt lease standards that are applicable to its members. Uh, not to other third parties. So my understanding is that the uh, commission, there's a committee working on s developing standards with the library with its members, which is the county as well as this, as the cities, um, who are members of the of the JPA agreement. This property is outside that scope because it is owned and operated by the school district, which it has the long term of being long name of being the West Sonoma. County Union High School District. That district is completely separate and apart from the county. The county has no control over the district. It does not own the property. There's no connection between the two of them. So as an outside third party, um, the library's direction is to negotiate for the best terms possible uh, for leases. Just, just as the library has negotiated the terms for the interim Rose, Roseland branch, um, the, the school district is um, outside third party and um, was subject to the negotiation provisions and not and, and any any standards that the Commission set applicable to its members would not apply to the school district okay that's a, the, thank you for clarifying that I think it's a it definitely an outlier kind of situation it's the only school district that we have this kind of relationship I think we all agree it's important to provide library services as broadly as as we can I just thought it was worth bringing this up because um, of the unusual nature of it. That again, we're paying a, a you know at least four property for at least five years, and um, when you know we have this topic under you know under review right now with the bylaws committee. So anyway, I you know it seems like a reasonable price, reasonable expectations. Appreciate the work on the, on the negotiation, but I did think I should point that out. Thank you. Okay, so um, do I hear a motion? Okay, David. I move that we approve this. Okay, um, any second? second? Jason? Okay, K David Cahill made the motion. Jason Merrick seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? All righty, unanimously passed. Thank and you very much. On. What? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we move on to the director's report. Thank you. I would like to call out a couple of items from the staff report and then talk about one thing from my report. So um, starting on page 134, 135, to note the uh, early literacy youth services conducted a survey of patrons using the Project Outcome Early Childhood Literacy Survey. And it was fascinating to me that the parents or caregivers who were surveyed, 95% learned something they can share with their children. 91% intend to spend more time interacting with their children. 93% felt more confident helping their children learn and 95% were more aware of resources and services provided by the library. That is just so gratifying to me because that's what we're here for. We want to provide services and materials to enrich the lives of the children and to help the parents do that as well. So I, I commend our youth services staff for, for this effort. 
moving back forward then to page 131, um, there, under staff celebration, you'll see notes of several grants that staff have been awarded, and that's wonderful. But I would like also to point out uh, Shannon Britton, library associate at Rohnert Park Katati, has won a scholarship through the Public Library Staff Education Program to pursue her master's in library science. Rosalie Abbott from Sebastopol has been appointed to serve on San Jose State University's Youth Services Program Advisory Committee. And our own Lana Adlawan, uh, Division Services Manager, was appointed to a two-year term on Public Library Association's Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and so Social Justice Task Force. So I thank them all, and I'm very proud of all of our staff for their efforts. And then backing up to, to my report, uh, one of the things you might have noticed was that there are multiple meetings for Automated Materials Handling System Working Group. Um, and just to give you a little bit of information about that, you know we had a very well-known uh, consultant who did a study and recommended that we implement autom Automated Materials Handling. Uh, the Commission allocated some money for that purpose. Um, I like to follow the ACBD rule, which is always consult before deciding. So the two most important questions to ask, in my opinion, are who's most affected by this decision and who has the most knowledge of the issue at hand? So uh, IT manager Vicki Turbovich and I talked this over and we decided that what we needed was an ad hoc working group of staff who would be affected by this decision. So Vicki put together a really great group of circulation staff from the branches, uh, someone from uh, collection services at headquarters, from uh, delivery services, from facilities, from IT, a really strong group of people. And we've been meeting once a week to make sure that all of their questions are answered Vicki has, has done a great job of making every voice heard. She's brought in uh, vendors to talk to people, to give demonstrations. She's arranged free loan of materials that they can try out, equipment they can try out. And then later this week, we're taking a field trip to Sacramento Public Library to see a unit in action and talk to the staff there. When, when this group has enough information, they feel that they have answered all of their questions and they understand the potential or the, the real changes in workflow that it would affect, the group will bring me a recommendation and at that point I decide whether we go forward with this or, or reallocate the money. So I, I think it's been a great process and it's a good model for us to follow in the future. So thank you. I just want to uh, do one more thing, say one more thing about that. We, with our technology strategic planning process, we talked about a collaborative framework. Mm -hmm. This is a very good example of that collaborative framework in action. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Oh. Barbara, comment on, on that thing. I wanted just a two, two quick things on page 136. I was so thrilled at the, besides the lunch program that was so successful, the emphasis on the recycling and the composting and the learning around that. I really want to commend the staff that worked on that. And on page 140, I really appreciate this information about the digital magazines and the or pardon me, the problem with the e-books and the audio books and the limitations and the problem with the publishers and all that jazz. And I'll bet we get a lot of questions and concerns about that. I'm wondering if we can get the word out, this, you know, the problems that we're having so we can let people know whether it's a, you know, little flyer or on our website or somehow. Because, I, you know, we get blamed for some of these things that are limitations based on the, on the publisher. I didn't know what, what our plans were to let people know about that. Publishers, I meant. I can speak to that real quick. Um, this information is already on our website and you okay. can find it in the FAQ section of our website. Okay. We've notified the entire uh, staff about it. So when they do get questions um, in the branches or through email, 
chat, whatever it might be, they can direct people to that website. We've also done some social media posts about this topic. Um, we don't, don't currently have anything in, in a you know, tangible bookmark or uh, something that you could hand out, but we could look into that. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Jamie. You're welcome. Um, since Commissioner McKenzie mentioned the lunch at the library, I just wanted to tell you that I got, uh, we got an email this afternoon from Rachel Icaza that as a total for uh, summer, we served 6,832 lunches in our libraries. So. All right. Very good. Okay, Deborah. Just as a comment about the lunches, I think it's wonderful that libraries are doing that. I think it's also really important that everybody in the community knows that because, you know, libraries aren't really, libraries weren't really created to feed children. And so if we are feeding children, people need to know that there's another problem and that we, of course, are stepping in and that we are an organization that responds to the community's needs, but it is not what we should be doing, and and we need to raise our voices to say that. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Okay. Um, that comes to the monthly financial report. Renee. All right, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I wanted to, before I go with the monthly financial report for July, I wanted to speak to the sales tax dollars uh, that uh, Commissioner Neff asked about. Uh, we're currently working- Could you speak closer yes. to the microphone? Yes, I Please. sure can. Thank you. We're currently working very close with the uh, management team at the library to come up with detailed, uh, very detailed by branch. Um, recommendations that we will be proposing at the next finance committee meeting. So we, as we're going along with this process, we're getting more and more detailed, and that's what will be happening to account for all of the surplus money that we have at this point. Okay. My concern was there, the, um, the financial information we have said we did not receive any sales tax for the month. So there is a time uh, there's a, a timing difference between when we record. Typically during the year, we record the revenue for sales tax when we receive it. But there's a two month lag time there. So, however, at the end of the year, we are able to accrue for the remaining two months that we have not received. So we make an estimate at year end, and that's why you have a full year end financial report. However, in the first two months, uh, we, we do not book that, the, the county has us book it as we receive it, so we will not be receiving July's until September. So we have the money, we have the money from previous fiscal years, but we uh, can't report it quite yet. Well, I just saw a big zero there. I did too, and I asked the question, so that's why I put it in the report. Okay, and also a second, is there any other questions on that? Okay, also a second comment about the OPEB trust. Um, Commissioner Hauser was the person who recommended that. I did uh, confirm that we have, we have a surplus for the general fund in fiscal year 1819, and that of approximately 1.5 million, and it had been put into the budget for fiscal year 1920 to send those funds to OPEB. So that, that was already, in process, but thank you very much for the suggestion. I also wanted to point out that uh, not only did I have a very lengthy call with uh, CalPERS regarding this, um, I also just recently attended a meeting about two weeks ago, a training, and they, uh, throughout their trainings, they continually cite Sonoma County Library for uh, doing exactly what we should be doing, and as the prime example to ensure that we've got this liability covered. Um, and she also did it when I was in, in the class, asked my permission and did explain to the rest of the class there that this is what everybody should be doing. So I think we're 
right in line with where we should be, and I, I agree that every extra dollar needs to go towards that liability. So, uh, Tom? Um, Renee, uh, I believe the money that's in the budget is n not surplus money. It's part of the regular budget that we said that every year we're going to put that amount aside. What I was suggesting is that we take some of the surplus and add it to that $1.5 million. It, it is actually the surplus because if you look at the budget, the budget is showing a loss. We have more, we are showing a, technically a loss in 1920 of 1 1.5 million, which is exactly the surplus we have in 19, in, I'm sorry, 1819. So it actually is part of the, the surplus we had in 1819. We'll talk about it. Okay, I'll show you later. Um, Barbara? Yeah, I just follow up with what Commissioner Hauser was talking about. We were talking about if there's a brand new surplus, that cumulative $6 million, that some of that go toward the OPEP. And I also had suggested at the, at the Finance Committee meeting that we have this, we currently have kind of an updated OPEP policy, it came out of an OPEP ad hoc committee meeting yes, group that we put together. I'm aware of that. That's where the recommendations came yes. from. But I think it's always a good idea to, to look at that every year, and that was my recommendation Absolutely. in the Finance Committee. We look at that every year. We have a policy. We don't just put it on the shelf and keep keep going with it. Yes, so. I, I understand. I, I did want to uh, also point that we cannot use Measure Y surplus for OPEB. That's right. I think okay. we understand that, but okay. you know, we spend the Measure Y money where we can, and then we... Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Andy, did you have a question? Sorry for my confusion on this, Renee, but um, the 1.5 million, does that represent our total contribution to the OPEB trust for calendar year 2018-19, or is this an additional payment above and beyond a previously budgeted amount? Uh, no, this was fully in, in what's in the budget. So what I'm trying to convey is that um, it, this, this surplus had been expected, and that that money is what you're using to pay per your policy into, in 1920. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Okay, so I'll move on to the monthly financial report for July 2019. As of July 31st, the general cash fund balance decreased to 11. 1 million from the previous balance of 13.5 million, and the sales tax cash balance increased to 9.1 million from the previous balance of 8.3 million. Year to date revenue and expense the library showed an excess of expenses over revenue of 2.386, I'm sorry, 2,386,508. Total revenue for the month of July was a negative 173.041 and total expense for July is two million two hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and sixty seven. The negative revenue is due to the reversal of a required standard year end entry made for reporting purposes only for the government accounting standards board. This entry is related to the investment gain and loss that you have to record at the end of the year, which was recorded and then promptly reversed in July and that's why you're, you're seeing a negative revenue. Coupled with the fact that we, moving on to the next section, that the library records property tax and sales tax revenue upon the receipt of funds. The two primary property tax payments are received in December and April, with the final year-end payment received in June. The sales tax payments are received once a month for sales tax revenue generated for two months prior. Therefore, the sales tax payment for July 2019 will be received and recorded in September 2019. The library's total fund balance at the end of July decreased to 23.6 million from the prior month's balance of 28.7 million. Any questions on that? Okay, moving on to the next, purchasing, exceeding the $25,000 threshold. I don't know that if you, if you have any questions, a, a good majority of these are your standard entries like utilities, rent, janitorial, that kind of thing that will always show up. I will be adding um, per 
a request that was made at the last commission meeting. I'll also be adding an amount for legal fees that we pay uh, to the bottom of this so that you'll be able to keep track of that. Does anyone have any questions? Um, oh, excuse me. Yeah, I just had a quick question. I, I'm not recognizing under U.S. Bank National Association what Cal cards are. So that is our our company credit cards through Cal cards is the the uh, public uh, credit cards that are offered. What kind of expenses do we put on the Cal cards? Whenever there's a conference, um, something like that, or if we need to use do a webinar. Uh, things like that. It is very highly regulated, which is why we use that. It, it just seems like that should be split out. Cal cards and equipment leases are kind of wildly different things. They are, but they're all paid to the same vendor, so I can certainly separate that out if yeah. you'd like. I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Okay, are there any suggestions for agenda items for the future? Um, I think last month I asked about the lab follow-up. And that I'm trying to nail down. I have a call in to Sam at this point in time. Um, she has not returned it and I was gonna follow up tomorrow and see if I could nail her down. Okay, because it's been a long time. And yes, I agree like with you. Kids go home for summer, they forget everything. I agree with well, you. Well, I forget faster. Okay. Stephen. Yes, I would second the request of Commissioner Hauser um, for the lab follow up and then also um, another report back, some with some detail about the commission retreat, um, something about a proposed agenda for us to review some, something yes. like that would be great. Thank Thanks. You. What was the second thing? Um, some type of proposed agenda, something for us for to the, okay. review. Thanks. Okay. Anything else, Deborah? My understanding is that some of the staff went to a wonderful conference um, just recently, and it would be great. The rural, and I can never remember what the name of it is, the rural no, 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 conference. Um, it, it would be great to have a report from that. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Randall. You should remind the commissioners that the all staff day is coming up at the end of the month. Ah, yes, thank you oh, very yes. much. What is it, the 27th, 28th, 27th? Okay, and it's gonna be at the Roner Park Community Center like it was last time. Okay. I recommend that all the commissioners at least come for lunch and it gives you a, a real feel about how big the library is with how many staff members. That we throw the numbers around about this many staff but to actually see them all in person uh, gives you a different perspective on the library. Hi. Uh, it's right. usually pretty good. Excuse me, commissioners. Um, this is Suzanne Silva, Human Resources Manager, and we are having uh, the staff day, as he said. Registration is, is at 8.15. It will start at 9. And as soon as we put the finalized agenda together, I can email it to all of you if you'd like. Okay, thank great. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Could you please send out a save the date with the location even before you have the final agenda? Oh, yeah, I can do that tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, and it is a fabulous event, and Randall is right. Seeing all those people in one room and realizing that they're spread out across the county and this is what makes the system go is just incredible. Incredible. Okay, anything else? Nope. Okay, with that, I call this meeting adjourned and we made it before 8.30. <laughs> Have a good month.
Okie dokie. 